May the words of my mouth and the meditations of my heart be acceptable in your sight, Lord, my rock and my redeemer. Amen. Well, have you ever noticed how many warning signs, warning signs that you pass by uh, just in the time span of an average day, signs like do not enter, or school crossing, or caution, wet floor, and a host of others. There is a hilarious warning circulating on the internet. It goes like this. Warning! Do not shampoo your hair in the shower. When I wash my hair, the shampoo runs down my whole body and printed very clearly on the shampoo label is this claim for extra body and volume. <laughs> so it's no wonder that I've been gaining weight. No wonder. For extra body and volume. Well, I've gotten rid. I went ahead and got rid of that shampoo and I'm going to start showering with Dawn dish soap. Its label reads this way, dissolves fat that is otherwise difficult to remove. <laughs> Make sense? Problem solved. So if I don't answer the phone, I'm in the shower. You got it? A trade school. Trade school in Britain came up with a, a really eye-catching warning sign uh, to post in factories. On a piece of electrical equipment, they posted a truly scary sign. It reads, danger, do not touch. Not only will this kill you, it will hurt the whole time you're dying. <laughs> They've got that sign up for real. That's a warning sign that you are never going to ignore. That's effective. Well, in our Bible passage for today, Jesus, our Lord and Savior, has a warning, a warning for his followers. The warning is this. If we choose him as our Lord and Savior, then we'll have to make some very difficult decisions, and we may very well face criticism and rejection, even in our most intimate human relationship, our relationship with our family. Now listen close to these disturbing words. I've come to bring fire on the earth, and how I wish it were already kindled. But I have a baptism to undergo, and what constraint I am under until it is completed. You think I came to bring peace on earth? No. I tell you, but division. And those who have ears, let them hear, friends, the words of our Lord. From now on, he says, there will be five and one family divided against each other, three against two, two against three. They will be divided, father against son and son against father. Mother against daughter and daughter against mother. Mother-in-law against daughter-in-law. And daughter-in-law against mother-in-law. Now, could Jesus, could Jesus, gentle Jesus, cause such division? This is a difficult passage. We want Christ to give us peace. Peace in our homes, peace in our world. Christ is saying to us that his coming into the world may very well bring not peace, but tension and division. That is what he's saying. Choosing a side in any battle, choosing a side in any debate can bring about tension and division, as our Lord describes. I read recently... And back in June 1924, I remember it well. Don't you? Back in 1924, 
a riot broke out at a baseball game <coughs> between the New York Yankees and the Detroit Tigers. The Tigers were down by four runs in the ninth inning, so the Tigers pitcher expressed his frustration by intentionally beaning one of the New York batters. And soon, as you can imagine, soon the players of both teams were trading shoves and insults and punches. And within minutes, hundreds upon hundreds of fans spilled out onto the field and began fighting. It is definitely one of the most notable examples of fan riots in American sports history. Sports fanatics. Sports fanatics can be very loyal to their team, and they can literally hate the opposing team. You can't cheer for both the Packers and the Bears, now can you? Some of you have informed me you definitely can't, uh, you, you, just, you can't support both the Bengals and the Steelers. You love one, you hate the other. It's the way it tends to be. You have to choose. Either you love the Lakers and hate the Celtics, or you love the Celtics and you hate the Lakers. Pick a side. But sadly, sadly, those aren't the biggest divisions in our country anymore today. And you know this. We're divided over politics. We're divided over values, we are divided over lifestyles, we're divided over culture, we're divided over ethnicity. We want our churches to be the voice of unity and peace in our culture, and that's part, part of our calling. But there are numerous, numerous examples, the scriptures riddled with them, examples in the Bible of Jesus' mission upsetting the status quo of religion, of politics, and culture, and relationships. It's the reason Jesus was killed. It's the reason that his followers were persecuted, falsely accused, thrown into prison, tortured. It's why some churches in other parts of the world have to meet in secret. It's why people say that you should never, ever talk about politics, religion, or money in polite company. Talking about your faith in certain quarters is guaranteed to create divisions. It's important to remember that wholehearted commitment always creates Tension. Complete commitment to one thing requires rejecting any competing commitments. Certain options are off the table. J.P. Moreland in his book, Apologetic Reasoning and the Christian Mind, tells us sharing his faith with a college student at the University of Vermont. The student was a believer in ethical relativism. Ethical relativism. Now here's how a believer in ethical relativism would express his faith. Whatever is true for you is true for you. And whatever is true for me is true for me. But no one should force his or her views on other people since everything is relative. In other words, believe whatever you want. And Moreland writes, I knew that if I allowed him to get away with ethical relativism, there could be for me no such be for him no such thing as real objective sin measured against the objective moral command of God, and thus obviously no need for a savior. Now, I thanked the student for his time and began to leave his room, and on the way out, I, I went ahead and picked up his small stereo and started out the door with it. Hey, what are you doing? He shouted. I said, well, I'm leaving your room with your stereo. Well, you can't do that. The student gushed, and Moreland retorted. Well, I happen to think that it's permissible to steal stereos 
if it will help a person's religious devotions. And I myself use a stereo to listen to Christian music in my morning devotions. Now, I would never, ever try to force you to accept my moral beliefs in this regard because, just as you said, everything is relative and we shouldn't force our ideas on others. But surely you aren't going to force on me your belief that it's wrong to steal your stereo, are you? Now, Moreland confronted the student's desire to believe in ethical relativism in certain areas of his life and ethical absolutism in other areas. He went on to say, believe it or not, the student honestly saw the inconsistency of his behavior and for a few weeks later, I was able to lead him to Jesus Christ. A wholehearted commitment's rare. It is rare, even in the church. So it automatically creates tension. People who make a difference in the world are always controversial. Always. Sometimes you have to choose. Now you all well know what's been going down in our denomination. It's been going down for decades. Our denomination's ripped apart. It is split. It's already occurred. We're wiring in the mire of turmoil, endless controversy, and it's not going away. We do well, friends, we do very well to remember this message of our Lord and Savior come decision time in the matters that have been thrust upon us. Chickens come home to roost. St. James must decide its future. Do you think I've come to bring peace on the earth, Jesus said? No, I tell you, but division. Jesus warns us, wholehearted commitment always creates tension. But, but wholehearted commitment also creates passion. You see, Jesus uses the imagery of fire, doesn't he? He uses the imagery of fire to explain his mission on earth. I have come to bring fire on the earth, fire. Now, usually we think of fire as a destructive force, but fire certainly can also mean a couple other things that are very, very positive. Fire can also symbolize passion. Wholehearted commitment creates passion. Passion as well as division. Fire has another benefit. Fire brings new life. Christ knew that the fire that was kindled in him would be kindled in his followers after his resurrection. He also knew that everyone who had this fire burning within them would find that this fire would burn away their old life, their old priorities, their old vanities, Fire destroys, but it also purifies. Fire also releases new life. Why do, you, why do you think the cross, a symbol of suffering, shame, and death, represents the followers of Jesus Christ? The cross. Because death is essential. Essential for new life. And willingly laying down your life for what you believe is the ultimate commitment. We want the church to be a beacon of peace in our society. We want our faith in Jesus to, to bring greater peace and unity and understanding to our families, our towns, our world. But committing to Jesus as Lord means giving up all other gods. It means putting God, God above everything including our love for our family, including our love for our own life. The life, death, and resurrection of Jesus brings peace to our hearts, but it also, it marks the greatest dividing line in human history. 
Either you're for him or you're against him. Either you're seeking a world of righteousness, justice, and love, or you're simply looking out for yourself. You can't have it both ways. It's time to pick a side. And all God's people said, Amen. Let's bow our heads in prayer. Refining God. The blaze of your honesty separates truth from falsehood in our lives. When we approach you too easily and casually thinking that we're in control, your baptism of holiness reveals that your loving sacrifice for us reorders all of our relationships and priorities. God, we too quickly assume that reality is based on how we perceive the world. Arrogantly, we treat you as someone doing our bidding, wanting to fulfill our whims, waiting to fulfill our wants, and unable or unwilling to challenge our most cherished idols. Your vision, your timing, your intense passion are at times very foreign to us. Our misguided intentions seek shallow answers, blind agreement, and approval of what we already believe. Or erect within us courage, courage that shatters and exceeds assumed boundaries. Release us from illusions that dampen your fire within us. Build a kingdom sensitivity that yields to your will. And help us to step back and ask, what, our Lord, do you seek for us? Where are you leading? Show us how we should care. And when we trust you completely, whether family, friend, or stranger, we will love all people as you love them. We're ready for your open future, or in the days ahead, we will find you already at work. In Jesus' name we pray, saying, Our Father, who art in heaven, Hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come. Thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our sins as we forgive those who sin against us and lead us not into temptation but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power, and the glory forever and ever. Amen. Friends, let's stand now, and let's join in singing our song for life, Stand By Me. When the storms of life are raging, stand by me. When the storms of life are raging, stand by me. On the sea, thou who rulest wind and water, stand by me. In the midst of tribulation, stand by me. In the midst of tribulation, stand by me. When the host of hell assail and my strength begins to fail, thou never lost a battle. Friends, it, uh, concerning your tornado relief offering, we're so glad that you're doing that. Uh, to be more specific, the box is right next to the TV in the gathering area. Please, but we don't want it in the offering plate so we can keep it separate. We can tally uh, the total. And we th again, thank you so much. And Gail, you did a wonderful job. You, you, you did a wonderful job. <laughs> Gail came up to me after Bible study a few months ago and she said, I'd like to serve as lector again. And you just had, she had done it in the way distant past. It's hard to get up here for many people. 
and uh, you just do a tremendous job, and we thank you for your service very much. Let's bow our heads to receive God's blessing. May God the Father prepare your journey. Jesus the Son guide your footsteps. The Spirit of life strengthen your body. The three in one watch over you on every road that you may follow. Amen. In the midst of faults and failures, stand by me. In the midst of faults and failures, stand by me. When I've done the best I can, and my friends misunderstand, thou will know it's all about me. Stand by me. In the midst of persecution, stand by me. In the midst of persecution. 